Good afternoon and welcome to St Mary's Church here in Portsea. We are just in the middle of dismantling this very fine walker organ for its full restoration. And we thought it might be of interest if we showed you a bit of the uh, progress so far in dismantling, but also um, talked a bit about some of the issues that we have to take note of and consider when we are dismantling an organ. It's too late often if we get to the workshop and we think, oh, I wish we'd measured that or we wish, wish we'd check that. And so there's quite a number of issues that we have to deal with here, which hopefully we will cover in the next few minutes. The first thing we have to do is to measure all the wind pressures and take the pitch of the organ. After we've done that, though, the, the main job is to get all the pipes out. And uh, here we are uh, looking at the back of the swell box and you can see um, there's most of the pipes in the swell have already been removed. And uh, I'm standing on the choir soundboard, which is already emptied, and then the two great soundboards are emptied as well. Um, but back in the swell, um, you see some of the, uh, the reeds, and um, particularly, have been altered substantially um, when the organ was repitched in the past. And our brief is to try to return these to their original pitch and tonality. Restoration of an organ um, obviously involves its significant dismantling, which presents a once in a generation or even more opportunity to do some serious work on the fabric of the organ chamber. And here we have um, the very substantial swell box covering uh, a large window in the back of the chamber, which probably isn't visible there. But uh, the, the challenge is that the, the, the window has to be accessible so that um, some serious work can be done to refurbish the stonework and, and the glass. But that involves taking down the swell box, which all sounds very straightforward until we realise that the swell box is partly holding up the casework um, through this beam here and, and this tie rod that's going to all the way down here, which were added subsequent to the organ's installation. And this is um, uh, evidence of the organ having been altered, the actions having been changed in 1965, and those new actions required um, taking away part of the building frame, which then had to be strengthened. Um, and so that's one of the challenges that we have to be able to get access to the window at the back without the casework falling down. Uh, we're now on the scaffolding on, out on the uh, front of the organ. You can see the facade pipes have all been removed and you see this beautiful oak casework. Um, it's very grubby at the moment and uh, will all be cleaned and carefully waxed um, before the organ uh, project is finished. And then we also have some angels up here whose gilding has seen better days. And this is all to be tackled when we come back to uh, install the restored organ. Some of the pipework that we have to remove is very small but some of the black work is pretty enormous. As you can see here, these uh, wooden bases of the sub-base 32 are very substantial in size and they need to be removed from the organ. Over here we have um, a very large metal alone, which is also to come out. So um, lots of uh, heavy lifting in the next uh, few weeks. Here we are underneath the swell box looking at the actions. There are um, actually three uh, swell soundboards, two main ones and then a small one at the back. And we can see here on the right of the picture the action, uh, under action for the front swell soundboard. Now the organ here was originally mechanical action, um, but uh, this was replaced with an electro-pneumatic action in 1965. And this is uh, visible on here on the right. You can see the wires that have been disconnected that pull open the pallets in the soundboard above. Now, these actions are unfortunately never worked very well. They've been, they're not sufficiently powerful. And in our brief, we have to make brand new three-stage electro-pneumatic actions. And so we have to take careful measurements down here to make sure that we get the right spacing and that there is um, size to, enough space to fit the, the new actions. Particular challenge here is the gap between the top of the reservoir and the action above. Presently, the blower for the organ is down in the cellar, right uh, um, underneath the church, and the, this cold and, and dirty air is sucked in and then um, comes up into the organ through a trunk. That blower is at the end of its life, and uh, the 
it, we are briefed to replace that with a new one, which we are going to be bringing into the organ in a very um, soundproofed cabinet. And there's a perfect space for it here. And so we always got to take careful measurements to make sure that the blower, the new blower fits and to work out how it's going to be trumped into the rest of the wind system. Here we are at the console. This console dates from 1965 and has played its last. Um, and uh, we are to replace this with a new console in a period style, similar to what Walker would have built uh, when the organ was new in 1889. There is one very grainy photograph of the original console, which we will certainly use as a starting point, but we will need to go and examine surviving Walker consoles from the period to try to capture many more details. And of course we have to measure the space that's available here to make sure that the new console fits. Throughout this organ there are five very substantial double rise reservoirs. Um, here's one of them down here and then there's the largest is uh, directly in front of me. But you can probably see here that it's sagging in the middle um, it, and it's, it's been braced by a temporary support. All these reservoirs have to come out and be re-leathered in the workshop but we'll obviously have to um, come up with a way of bracing that one so that it is uh, um, solid all the way across. You can also see in front of that reservoir some of this flexible tubing that uh, is more at home in the air conditioning industry um, and all of that is to be removed and replaced with solid trunking in traditional style. So you can see from in this view the very substantial scaffolding that we've got both on the front of the case and at the side. This hatch at the side is where much of the material and components are coming out and then they are hoisted down by this uh, lifting beam and a hoist down to the church floor. And then over here we have already uh, one van load of trays has gone back to the workshop and there are lots of uh, pipe trays here full of small components and pipes all ready to go back and uh, start their process of restoration.